Today, YouTube, it is the 16th of October, 2023. This is back. This is a Honda EU3000 uh, generator that uh, have a couple videos on already. We've done a complete service on it. This is the one that will start if you pull start it, but will not start if you crank it with the starter and the battery. Um, I did quit working on it in June. I uh, had some other priorities. We were taking a big trip and uh, with our RVs, uh, myself and my truck camper and my dad, my nephew in my dad's pickup and like a 26 foot travel trailer. We took this generator with us because it would start and run and do what it's supposed to do if you pull start it. Um, and uh, my nephew's kind of working off from on the road so he had to things to charge and he was really interested in having the AC working every day. Um, so this generator actually got quite a bit of use and I would suggest a, an hour to a day while we were on the road and it did fine. One time I had run out of fuel and uh, it would I put fuel in it and it would not restart with a pull starter. That's the one, the one other clue this thing has as to not starting. We let it cool off and then it fired right up and ran for hours. So we're, this thing hasn't run since June 26th. So July, August, September, October, it's been about four months. Um, it was fueled up on the road uh, when my dad fueled up his truck. He fueled up the generator so it doesn't have non-ethanol fuel in it. However, it's been summertime and it uh, it's only been four months, three and a half months, whatever that is. Okay, so fast forward to today, it's time to dial this thing in and get it done and figure out what we're gonna do with it, probably going to sell it. Um, it's not, I, I like my generators real pretty and everything, although you could fix this up a little bit, would it really be worth it? Some uh, farmer construction folks or whatever just be happy to have a lower cost uh, e3000 um, that runs really good and this one runs really good um, it just looks ugly and it won't start with the starter two things have come up in the forums um, groups page on Facebook for example um, a lot of people suggest it's the battery um, and I have not replaced the battery but I did crank on a little bit and knowing that I have cranked on a little bit I have flooded it um, because with no spark, it still has fuel going in, so forth. But this thing has not been run or charged again since June 26. I know that because we made it back on my sister's birthday. But it still cranks fine. Won't start. Still cranks fine. So. I don't believe it's a battery, but I brought a battery and we are going to jumpstart it. So I got a, a almost 100% charge battery. I put the charger on it anyway and uh, have a small set of cables. And we are going to jumpstart this to rule out if it is a battery. Now that'd be the easiest thing as if it was the battery. But again, still cranking pretty good for sitting for four months. Um, if it is the battery though, there you go. I'm going to be in this uh, today. I'll just order a battery and we'll be done with it. Um, except I'll probably clean it up and put a little paint on it or something, make it look a little nicer. So let's try it. I'll get the stuff ready, uh, figure out where the battery is in this thing, if I can remember, and uh, let's jump start it. All right, it's been a minute, so I'm clicking it in the front. I think it's in the front. Don't laugh at me if it's not. I work on many things. And I have a poor memory. There it is. Ooh. Boy, these covers are dirty. Okay. <laughs> have a Mighty Max battery. It's been on a charger for a little bit, but it was well fully charged. Willfully charged. 
and don't laugh at these cables. I've jump started many motorcycles with these. I used to carry these in my gold wing. I used to make them and give them as door prizes. They are 10 gauge copper. Work fine. Okay, so we got a charger and a battery and a battery. So we're gonna crank it. And if it starts, I'm gonna give kudos. I'll go find the guys that said it was a battery and I'll give them some kudos. Okay, here we go. Doesn't sound any different. think so. All right, let me uh, take some other stuff apart here. All right, put spark checker on it. Let's crank it over. <laughs> Nothing. And uh, that's what we found earlier this year. So, um, battery, not a problem. I didn't think it was. The battery felt really good the whole time, but uh, we need to eliminate these uh, suggestions from those that have run across this before. So the other suggestion from a buddy named Richard suggests that there's a gap requirement between the flywheel and the magnets, and that should be, I think, between 10 and 20 thousandths, if I remember correctly. And um, he said, if you set that, you'll, be, you'll fix the problem. Um, he said he's actually done a half a dozen of them that had this same problem. And I told him, if he's right, I'm sending him a Starbucks card. Because I was uh, certainly at a loss for what else it could do. So, let's get this thing further toned down. See what a pain it's going to be to get to the flywheel. This insulator thingy. I think this falls off of there. Pop this vent. And it can't be anything too crazy, right? Because it does run. I know I didn't show you it runs, but it runs. We ran it for two weeks, every day. Okay. Let me, uh, I gotta pull this handle to get this insulator off. Set the parts over here. Stay. Bell. Okay. And this insulator, two piece insulator, comes off. Hmm. I think this is the back side of the engine there. I don't think we need this side off. We're going to pull it anyway because we got it off. I got to pull this stud. Must be a 10. Insulator off. 
Yeah, because I don't think there's flywheel on the back side. But boy, how do you get to the front side? Remember, guys, I never had one of these parts. So we're learning. That's the fun part. Let me get this turned around. Well, boys and girls, we're digging deeper, getting more parts off this thing. It's so much easier to work on here in my shop rather than out in the shed, which is where I started this thing. It's probably how, the, how I got so frustrated with it. Just limited space, limited tools, no winch. Yeah, making it easy. Anyway, I've unbolted all the motor mounts so I can pick this thing up. I believe I can get to all of the bell housing bolts now. I've pulled the starter off there. Um, so I think this is going to go okay. So I can't remember how many bolts, about six or eight, ten millimeter heads. I'm going to try to get them all pulled and get the bell housing off of there, which should reveal the coil. And that's where we're headed. Um, a number of theories, like I've mentioned before, once the one is the coil itself, it, the distance between the coil and the magnet on the flywheel is compromised, question mark. The other issue is potentially the coil is just bad. But either way, I'm not going into it this far with this much work without just replacing the coil. So I have one ordered. I don't think it's going to be here till Monday. Today is Thursday. I'll double check um, tracking on it tonight or tomorrow. Anyway, so we're going to replace the coil no matter what. We'll try and clean up. This thing is super, super dirty. Try and clean it up. A little bit try to make it a little bit better anything we've taken off we can clean anything that's left in here we can do what we can do and uh, maybe just touch up some paint over some rusty stuff or whatever um, it does not to be perfect but we can make it look presentable um, again this thing ran beautifully just had to start it with a rope is all um, and we put serious hours on it. in fact it fuel every time uh my dad and my nephew would fill the truck with fuel because we were on a pretty good trip and uh he had a v10 dodge which you know got outstanding fuel economy maybe seven and maybe six anyway they were fueling up a lot so every time they stopped they topped off that tank so it's got a a year and four months old year and five months old fuel in it and it was not non-ethanol because we were gassing up at truck stops or whatever we could get in and out of pretty easily so it doesn't smell bad though but i'll dump it out and uh we'll put non-ethanol back in it but anyway i'm gonna start wrenching on trying to get this out of there but you can see there's bolt 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 there's one down there one on the other side i don't think there's anything along the bottom i picked it up enough to know that so there we go let's get this bell housing off of here reveal the coil and know what we got to do to fix it get her back together here we go boys and girls we got that bell housing out of there there was this one really long bolt kind of came out of right about here don't forget that one it just escaped me so what we got there's the coil so this thing is crunchy okay so this whole stator assembly is crunchy and in a position hear that not good right i can see magnets moving see it that's not good um, so now we gotta get that flywheel off of there or rotor whatever we call it stators on the inside it's got the wires in it rotors on the outside it's got the magnets on it and I gotta get that off of there the only puller I have is freaking huge in a three jaw I got a drawer full of two jaw I had a little three jaw I must have destroyed it on something so I'm gonna run to Harbor Freight we're about done with this thing for the day. Get a little three jaw. See if we can pull it. If that doesn't work or tries to destroy something, I'll have to make something using those three bolts um, to bolt a plate with a nut 
welded to it and then go down in there with a rod of some sort hard bolt or something that's what we're gonna have to do so I'm off to Harbor Freight we'll get a puller we'll reconvene tomorrow all right okay we're getting there here we go all right boys and girls it is the next day I stopped Harbor Freight last night got this three pack of three jaw pullers it's a three inch a four inch and a what is this six inch eight inch whatever okay I'm gonna try this guy here significantly smaller than that bigger than I have so let's get this out get it put on this rotor see if we can't pop it off of there we can get to these loose magnets and reattach them wait for my coil to come in in the meantime i can clean up this rusty musty mess and uh try and make a reasonable generator out of this thing here we go Right, the three jaw puller just not going to work. There's four openings in that thing. I don't know why I thought a three jaw would be correct for it. I have a drawer full of two jaws, so I picked an appropriate size, and we have it connected here. Now then, will she pop? Strike it with a hammer if I can get it. Wait right there. Pretty chunky in there. Buddy. You ever want to work right again? Here we go. Off of there. That's a good sign. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Save the pieces. Magnets are serious. There's one right there. Hanging on. From right there. That's the offender. I wish I could get one of these rotors. The Stator's no problem, not even that expensive. But the rotor, the, with all the magnets, that's a different deal. I believe a person can epoxy this back together. Let me bring you over here. Show you what we're dealing with. Ah... <sighs> There it is. A little piece broken. I think there's enough left of it. If we cleaned all that up super good, 
uh, and the back of the magnet is super good so we can JB weld that back together the rest of it looks okay all right we got her off this is progress people let me uh, take some time I'll get the Dremel tool out or whatever it takes to get all the stuff cleaned up super good and uh, mix up a good batch of JV weld make that happen here we go okay boys and girls here we are um, I decided not to use like a Dremel tool or power tool of any kind to clean this uh, out of respect for these other two magnets I didn't want to damage anything um, so I just uh, took some, actually took some DA discs and cut them up, um, some 80 grit um, to clean up the steel, and some 180, I guess these are my pieces, to clean up the magnet. So um, it's amazing that magnet survived. It's got just a little bit of a rub right there. You can just barely feel it um, where it's just a little shiny. And a little piece of the bottom has chipped off. I have the chip, but I've elected not to put it back together. I figure it'll be stronger if I just JB weld a little thicker. And it was down here. That chip was down at the bottom. So we'll put that magnet back in the same direction that it was, uh, just in case it makes a difference. So I got some JB weld out here. I've got the uh, this thing spaced up enough. So I could put a spring clamp on it after I get it set. And then we're going to leave this thing for 24 hours before we do anything with it. Um, so yeah, I think we're ready to apply this. And uh, in case you've never done it, we'll just show it. Because we can. Alright, let me put you in the stand. Alright, this is a opportunity to mix up. A substantial amount of uh, JB weld because I don't I don't want to get halfway through it and decide I didn't make enough so I've, I've always been a big fan of JB weld since I was in high school I've glued I glued a carburetor base plate together with this that a friend had broke a friend of my dad's had broke I think tried to pull it off with three of the bolts or three of the nuts removed and one of them still on there and broke the whole corner off the carburetor right through a vacuum port and I bought the carburetor from him I remember it was a 780 spread bore I bought the carburetor for like 50 or 60 dollars and repaired it with JB Weld. That was still on my car when I sold it some year or two later. I simply slid a toothpick into the vacuum port after I glued it and clamped it. Um, but that thing was super strong. It was it was great. All right. Am I in your way? Mm -hmm. This is way, way too much, and that's the point. I can't believe that magnet stayed in. We ran this generator not for an hour, but we were on the road for... 11 days um, my nephew and my dad staying in their trailer and my nephew had their AC going and he was kind of trying to work from the road so he had all his electronic devices that he needed to charge every day and all that jazz and uh, that generator ran every day every time they filled up with fuel they filled up the generator as well. All right, here we go. Ah. 
Oh man, Glenn. Boy, those magnets are strong. There is some metal in this JV weld, isn't there? Because it was attracted to the magnets. I'm going to flip this magnet, careful, over and fill up that gap. I should have used a piece of wood for this. What was I thinking? I don't know. Okay. I'm going to set this magnet aside, try and clean up some of my nest, nest, mess on the neighboring magnets. Something like that. Alright, let me uh I'm gonna grab a paint stick and let you roll here. Okay. Now then. Just going to put a, a tad more here. Okay. I guess it's time to set this in there. Wish me luck. Is this thing going to get pulled all around? Is it? By the magnetism? Yeah, it sure is. Oh boy. Oh boy, at least it's not like quick setting and we've got an hour to fiddle with it if we need it. Now then, gotta try to move it over. Put it where it's supposed to be with a clamp on. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. I'm not sure that I'm going to make it with the clamp on. I'll take it off for a minute. Get a knife.
Oh man, it just pulled over to the other side. Yep. Getting a feel for how this is working though. Okay, I'm going to have to get some spacers in here. Something to uh, keep it in place. Alright, I found some match sticks to keep the spacing. I'm going to put a little smaller clamp on it. And hope that that does well. got a space in it now as good as it's gonna be I think all right guys that's it we're gonna come back to that tomorrow boy the wind really picked up it's going crazy it was sunny and everything out there a little bit ago and now we gotta see about cleaning up this mess and it is a M-E-double-S mess and uh yeah, get ready to put this thing back together tomorrow. Here we go. All right, guys. I've spent literally hours, two or three hours, uh, wire brushing all the rust on this thing and then using my favorite rust converter. That's it. Click. And, uh, yeah. Man, there was a ton of junk in here. I vacuumed and scraped and wire brushed and blew with a compressor and more and repeat and spin and repeat and here we go um yeah but she uh came out pretty clean my mask in there and then i cleaned up the bell housing i've got the two end covers actually in the parts cleaner right now circulating some cleaners around them and uh we're just going to keep cleaning and fiddling and stuff because it's going to be tomorrow before i'm touching this yeah and it's going to be Monday, I think, before the coil arrives. However, I don't imagine that coil is bad, but there's no way I'm going this far and not replacing it. You know what I mean? Um, just don't do that. Unless you just love taking these things apart. And this thing was not fun. Um, but it uh, was a little easier than I anticipated. Just got to be not afraid to take stuff off of it um, and uh, think about it for a minute. But it came apart. It'll go back together. All right. So uh, we've got other parts to clean up. Just kind of make ready. Um, I am going to paint the tins. Those two end covers. The plastic end covers. I think I'm going to uh, bed liner those. They're pretty rough. They'll come out. You know, I'll take them from a you know, 3 or 4 out of 10 to a 8 out of 10. You know. Getting them all fixed up. Okay guys. So, I'm just going to continue cleaning, and we'll catch you back here tomorrow. So, I was going to order a new battery for this thing. Um, this one is the one that came out of it. I kind of lost it in the shed, but I found it. Um, it's been out of the machine for a year, and I hooked my smart charger up to it, and it said uh, it was at 12 volts, 80% or 60% charge and i'm like whoa really so anyway i put it back on the charger um may not be anything wrong with it so i have a battery sitting in my shopping cart on amazon but i haven't launched it yet uh because this thing can charge up i just put it on the charger like seven minutes ago and i believe it's going to charge up just fine i'll put this i've done reviews on these chargers i like them so much i bought a second one and it's out there on my super duty right now in repair mode it has that restoration or recondition the wrench and uh yeah 
my batteries and my Super Duty. Well, let's go out there. Batteries in my Super Duty are seven years old. So I know that they need to be replaced, but I'm not planning many trips or anything this winter. So um, I'm just trying to charge them up. And uh, I think I'll get by with them. We'll put new ones in come spring or next trip or something. So it's in repair mode. And it's been in repair mode for four days. <laughs> I just keep, it times out. It only allows you to run them for 24 hours. Anyway, so this has two uh, Group 65 batteries. Again, they're 2017, nine to 2017. So seven years and two months old. And uh, they're good. I mean, they're not good. They need to be replaced. I had to service the other day, and they said your batteries need to be replaced. And I get that. They don't... They go dead after it sits for a month. But uh, we're just going to make them last through the winter. And I'm going to keep going in this repair mode until it's happy with these batteries. So, yeah, just an experiment. All right, see you tomorrow. All right, boys and girls, been cleaning up parts, and uh, I've got these end pieces done. I put them in the parts washer for an hour or so, and uh, I've got a can and a half of this uh, Iron Armor truck bed coating, and uh, you could use to get this at Harbor Freight. Although they're redoing this section, I'm afraid this stuff's going away, and it's excellent. Um, I've done the whole hood on my black tracker two or three years ago. Still looks great. I've used it on motorcycle black parts, um, all kinds of stuff. You name it, I've used it. And we're going to use it on these end pieces. Um, this one's all been scratched up. Some numbskull uh, put silver paint on it. I don't know why. Just made it all that worse. The other one's got a big old repair on it. We're not going to do any more with it. Um, it is what it is. We'll make it look better. Oops. I didn't test this can. There we go. I have one full can on the shelf there. Maybe this has less in it than I thought. Got the other one in by the wood stove warming up. Had this one warming up. Farther away you spray this, the more texture you'll get. The more bad stuff it will hide. That one's dying. 
Keep going. That's probably pretty good. It'll bring you in. Obviously, it'll dry and kind of level out a little bit. But uh, yeah, cover up all them scratches and defects and whatever. Make it look pretty good. Pretty good. All right, I'll do the other one off camera. All right, here we go. Okay, boys and girls, it is the next day. It's Saturday. And uh, yeah, we're going to put this thing back together today. I know I said earlier that you know, I had ordered a coil and I did. It's not going to be here till Monday. Um, and I don't want to wait. So I'm going to put it back together. I'm confident that coil is fine because like I say it run fine it wouldn't start with the electric starter why I think because that magnet was dragging on the stator and slowing down the rotation and it wasn't spinning fast enough for spark so I've been working on this uh, rotor for oh 45 minutes probably this morning taking my time I'm cleaning everything up real good where we replaced that magnet it probably failed because it's the only place with a opening and I think the rust got under it and dislodged it so I cleaned off the outside a little bit not crazy and yeah we are ready to put this thing back together so I'm gonna do that I mean this is just a tapered shaft with a key and uh, so I'm gonna put that back on um, Put the bell housing back on, which I cleaned up yesterday. Put this thing down on its motor mounts again. And uh, go from there. Got the two end housings painted yesterday. The little pull start piece. I actually started straightening up the tins, um, which are over here, because they were beat. Um, I, I'm not done, but I'm not going to make them perfect either. We're going to bore some holes in this thing and bolt a big old ugly uh, propane regulator on it anyway after it's done and running again. But uh, yeah, let me uh, continue with this thing so we can get it up and running today. Here we go. All right, boys and girls, got the uh, bell housing back on, fan back in, starter assembly back on. I still have this rope tied because uh, I take the handle off to get that little um, metal piece done. I painted it yesterday. I got that grill painted today. Those came out wonderful. I've got the fuel tank draining. And uh, it was practically full. Again, you know, they filled this up every time they stopped for fuel on our trip. Um... I, I think I brought one small gas can, so that's all we have, all we had for the trip, so. Okay. We're draining. It's a little hose, so it's going to take a minute. I don't know how much fuel that holds, so I think that's two and a half, and I think that's one and a half, one and three quarters, something like that. Hopefully that does it. So, um, what's next? Uh, I'm going to start reassembling. The bits and stuff put the dash back up put these braces back in we gotta get the gas tank in the gas tank's got to slide from this side I believe so I can put this support strut in oh I got to clean them up a little bit um, that's okay get those put in tank in after it's clean dash up oh, that old battery is still good so I'm gonna use it um, again, I'm not going to replace the coil, at least this time. It's coming, I'll have it. Um, this stuff cleaned up good. Probably got a little clean up on the back side. Yeah, and we'll go. Here we go. Well, guys, there's been much progress. I did uh, go home and get Autumn beer. Autumn, did you come out to help Dad? Because he might have forgot. No, where are you going? Dad might have forgot how to put this thing back together again. Had to go get the girls. Okay, um, it is substantially back together. Not going to put tins on or anything. They're not ready. And uh, this thing. 
I've been just cleaning. You can tell how nice the tank is. It's actually good inside too, so that's good. I pulled a little over probably two and three quarter gallons out of it. I put one gallon of fresh non-ethanol back in it. Gonna turn on the gas, let it fill the carburetor. Um, this thing always ran good before. I don't know why it wouldn't run good now. Remember, it would start with a pull cord. It wouldn't start with the electric starter. My diagnosis, if it runs, and it better, um, is that loose magnet kept the electric starter from cranking it quick enough. That's been a couple people guessed that on the Honda Generator page on Facebook. Um, that the starter wasn't turning it fast enough. Okay, it sounded pretty good. Battery was good, but uh, it was not... I mean, it it was chunky when you spun this thing by hand just by grabbing the rotor, the flywheel, turning it. So, if it runs on the electric starter, it's a win-win. If not, we get to take it back apart a little bit. Okay. Are you ready? Autumn Bear? Are you ready, sweetie? Autumn? We're going to start generator. Is that okay? No, it's over here. Yeah, it's over here. Okay? Tell everybody that we're going to get ready to start it. So cover your ears. Okay, sweetie? Okay. You can be in there if you want to. It's safer. Okay. Putting you in a stand. Okay, Honda U3000 IS. Hasn't run in a year. We... Took it on a trip a year ago, June. Um, so it's been more than a year since it has run. Um, but it worked fine. But it would only start with a pulling of the rope. Choke on. Gas on. Ready, set. <laughs> Spark checker. Artemis was supposed to start right up. Okay, I'm going to kill the lights, make it easier to see. The spark checker. We're hoping to see sparkage. If not, I mean, the coil's coming. Autumn, I need to come through here, okay, sweetie? Thank you. Okay, see if we get spark. No. Denied. Denied. Oh, spark. It is working. Yeehaw. I have to give it a little help. All right, air cleaner's off. There's almost nothing left in this can of starting fluid. No choke. Come on, baby. All right. Starting fluid is empty. Moving on to carburetor cleaner. Come on, buddy. Well, 
Well, now I have a fuel problem, but that's okay. We can deal with fuel problems. Um, it has been sitting a year, but just a year, and the fuel wasn't bad. I mean, I'll burn that fuel that came out of this stuff for whatever reason. But I'm thinking, you know, we're not... Okay, this thing has a... Uh, a screw on the bowl that I can loosen up and uh, drain whatever is in that carburetor out of there. Let me get to it. Okay, um, I opened the screw to drain the bowl and only a few drops came out. It was pushing something with it, so I tried to pressurize the fuel tank just a little bit and it did not help. So, I pulled the air cleaner base off. We're going to remove the carburetor bowl with it in place. Let's see what we got. So, like I said, we ran this generator every day for almost two weeks. A year ago, June, it is uh, a week before Thanksgiving, so I'd like to... 20 something of November right now so 17 months with regular fuel in it this is the result again it was half disassembled oh yuck I'm telling you this is so much worse than I imagine um, I'll let my EU series generators sit for a year with non-ethanol fuel in them. I changed the fuel out coming up here, you know, Thanksgiving week, which is, well, this coming week, I'll change the fuel out in all of my generators. I didn't do this one. It was in a state of, uh, disassembly and the fuel was shut off uh, there was what we got yuckers okay I'm gonna open fuel again Try to pull the pin out. It's moving. To drop the needle out. Let's put everything in there. So, nothing. We ain't getting nothing. I know the fuel valve works. I've cleaned out the sediment bowl today. I just drained nearly three gallons of fuel out of it. So, uh, no flowage. Let's see if we can break the dam loose here. Trying to get some of that yucky off of there. Yeah, okay. Let's just pull her off, I guess. Thought maybe she'd. Uh, be an easy fix. Guess not. All right, let me pull it off there. All right, we'll pop that off there. I've already been kind of cleaning it a little bit. So, got flow now through the fuel. You watch it come out where the needle goes. 
Okay, it was plugged and then uh, tried to spray through the jet, wouldn't go. So I got my little cleaner and pushed its way through there. And now we've got good access through the jet. This was plugged. We'll spray it again through the jet. Should come out, you know, on the inside. There we go. See it? Right there. Got flowage. All right. If this thing is anything other than perfect, just I'll just get a new carburetor coming. But uh, I think it's going to be okay. So I'll get these other parts cleaned up, reassemble it, put it back on. We're not going to fiddle with it and soak it and everything. Again, if this doesn't work perfectly, we'll just get a new one. Here we go. Okay, we're going to stick this back together and see if it'll run. Stick it back together. Like I say, it's not great. If it don't run perfect, we're going to order a new one. Order a new one. Cleaned out the bowl. Oops. Terrible. So I don't... I'm sure I didn't do anything with this um, when I got it, just before we left on that trip. Um, as far as the carburetor was concerned, gave it a full service, but it ran good. But I never had it open, so not necessarily all this nastiness happened in 15 months. Okay. So, let's see... This thing needs to point. This is choke. It points that way. We point that approximately here. That'll give me access, won't it? But again, way worse than I ever anticipated. Um, heck, I could have been easier just to pull this off while I had everything apart. What would I be doing right now, right? Click. Torquage. Okie doke. I'm going to run that. Screw in. Easier now. Then once it's installed, Ta -da. oh yeah. So fuel lines easy enough to put on. That's easy enough to put on. We gotta do this choke. You gotta line up this pin on this choke mechanism with that. Okay. Can be tricky. You gotta do it while it's sliding on. That was amazing. So the rubber line's easy enough to put on. Well, we can do it now. It's not going to hurt anything. Okay. This choke cable. <laughs> it's way up there. Once you learn how this thing works, this cable's not too bad, but... Um, we're going to do 
Get to stay on there. You gotta do the cable end first or last? Can't remember. The spring loaded end. You have the cable, then the rubber thing that goes in the middle, and then the spring that goes on this side. That'll make sense when you see how this is done. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take this back off and do the choke cable while it's loose. It's just too dark and hard to get to in here. And that thing's kind of spring loaded and it disappears into the abyss. See what I mean? Come on. I need a straight pair of these at the moment. I can't see it. Might be slightly easier okay so the metal on the outside rubber in the middle spring on this side okay at least that's how I'm doing it why don't you hold the light for me yeah I can't see Okay, rubber in the middle. Metal on the far side. And then jam it into the rubber. Come on. It's just... There, I've got a little more slack now. That'll be helpful. Come on, rubber thing. You go in there again. Then the metal goes into the rubber thing. There we go. And then you can do this thing. Pull the spring back. And put that on the other side. Did you move all the way around? You creep. It did. There's a detent for that lead end to fit into but it moved all the way around now we got to reline up the hole in the plastic choke thingy come on choke cable find a comfortable place to live will you please what's your problem Golly gee. Well, you're on the wrong side of the fuel line. Are you? No. Yeah. Dang. I think it was on the wrong side of the fuel line. Oh, this is really fun times. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, all of a sudden the choke cable just doesn't find a happy place to be. I'm taking the fuel line back off again. We're going to try to relocate it. I don't know what it's doing. We'll tuck it in there. See if it's happy. Doesn't seem real happy. Maybe. Okay. Now we got to put that pin in. Which one of you is holding the light? Oh, you could.
This is horrible. It was easier with the tank off, I can tell you that. Okay, I'm gonna fight this for two hours. I'll be back. All right, it, slide this thing all the way out to the end of the threads so that you can, and, and it just went right in. Um, sometimes you just gotta slow down and think about it for a sec. I did it once, I should be able to do it again. I'm just gonna put the base back on. One bolt, two nuts. Click. Now then, gas on. See if it leaks now. I dare you. I dare you to leak. In five, four, three, two, choke on, gas is on. Is that carburetor full by now? It was flowing. Should be good. Should be good. All right. Fire in a hole. Put the air cleaner back in. She was surging just a little cold too. I'm gonna unplug the light from the sparking plug. And air filter. You guys didn't know this filter is the same as like a Briggs and Stratton. I know that because I had half a dozen of them on the shelf when I got this machine. There is a pre filter right there, by the way. I just think it's easier to put that filter on first, then this goes on. Relatively easily. I really want to be where you are. Sorry, I got to set you out of the way. I don't know if you can see anything or not. I must have something not perfect. There we go. Okidokuli. Fire without choke. Fire with choke. 